yeah Put in work and I'm getting mine And now every time it go bang Coming for the top, got the game in the lock Every time that I drop, know I gotta go bang I'ma keep it hot, know that I can never stop Keeping everything I got, I'ma make it go What's going on Abnormal Family and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about five different things I wish I knew before I started my own calisthenics journey. Now if I knew these five tips from when I started, I feel like I would have progressed so much faster with my calisthenics journey. This is why I'm making this video because I feel like you guys can benefit from this. Tip number one, mobility. Mobility is key guys. If you're not mobile, you can't build strength in full ranges of motion. When I first started the calisthenics, I used to play a lot of football prior to it, so I was very, very stiff. I didn't really care about mobility. All I cared about was getting strong and muscly. That's all I cared about. I didn't care about stretching or working on my mobility and that bit me in the butt, literally. The further down the line I went as my strength advanced and I wanted to learn these more advanced skills, especially when it came to handstand work, any overhead pressing motion work, mobility is key guys. If you can't get into certain ranges of motion, your strength, no matter how strong you are, you won't progress with your calisthenics, especially when it comes to those harder skills. If you're not very mobile, you're also very prone to injury because you tend to compensate because of your lack of mobility. Before you get started with your calisthenics journey, I have three mobility tests for you guys. The first one is basically to sit down in a squat. If you can comfortably sit down in a squat without raising your heels, and again, keeping your chest nice and tall, then that is a great squat form. You have passed that test. The first exercise, you've passed the flying colors. Next exercise, you're gonna be laying down on the floor. All you're doing is placing your arms behind you in an overhead position. I wanna see if your back starts to arch. If you can keep your back nice and flat on the ground and your hands go all the way behind you and you can manage to touch the floor, then you have amazing shoulder flexion. That means whenever you do any overhead pressing movements, you won't have any issues. When you do handstand training, you're gonna have that nice straight line. That's what we're after, guys. If you can't quite do that, don't worry. It's okay if you don't pass that test. You just need to work on your shoulder mobility. And last but not least, the final exercise, all I want you to do is sit down in the L position on the floor. This is gonna test your hamstring flexibility. If your lower back starts to round, then you know there's an issue either with your hamstrings or your lower back. We need this L position, this seated L position a lot for those levers. For example, the L sit, a very staple beginner calisthenics exercise, helps build strength in your core. If we can't sit in that position comfortably, we're gonna struggle. Now, if you pass all those three mobility tests, then great, you are well on your way to starting your calisthenics journey. And don't worry, if you didn't pass, that's totally cool. You can still start your journey, but do also keep training that mobility of yours. So I'll leave you the link in the description below, different mobility drills, specifically targeting those areas. So watch those videos, drill those, and eventually your mobility will improve tenfold. And by doing so, your calisthenics progress will accelerate. I post weekly mobility videos on Instagram as well, so don't miss out on them. Follow me on at abnormal underscore beings for more mobility related content. All right, so you've got our mobility down. What next? Tip number two. If you wanna be a monster in the calisthenics field, if you wanna be the backy of calisthenics, then you must, and I repeat, you must drill your basics. Now, what are your basics? Well, I'm gonna summarize a few exercises I like to call your basics, your bread and butter of calisthenics. There are a number of bodyweight exercises, but to name a few examples, we have pull-ups, push-ups, dips, planks, squats, lunges, you name it. There's so many different basic bodyweight exercises for you guys to master before you start learning those more advanced exercises. We need to condition our bodies. We need to condition our wrists. Very important when it comes to calisthenics. We're gonna be putting a lot of pressure onto these wrists. Our elbow joints, especially when we're learning those levers, these need to be very strong. And we can condition these guys by again drilling our basics. A great way to do this as a beginner is again to run a circuit. So pick around five to six bodyweight exercises that you find challenging, yet you can still do. And again, just do that in a circuit fashion. So do, let's say for example, a few set of pull-ups, as many as you can, then go into dips, then go into push-ups, and after that go into squats. Just run a little circuit for you. Do it as many rounds as you can for around 20 to 30 minutes, then take a rest. And the guys, I'm telling you now, that's gonna help 
build up those neurological pathways so you can actually perform those exercises with great form and technique. And it's gonna help condition your bodies. So when you do get to that level where you're doing those more harder exercises, like for example, the L sits, the tuck front levers, the tuck front back levers, the planches, your body is gonna be used to it and you won't mess your shit up. You won't injure yourself because your body's already strong. It's built that solid foundation. Once again, guys, check out in the description below previous beginner calisthenic videos I've made in the past. It's gonna break down all those basic exercises you guys should master before you take your Cali game to the next level. Tip numero tres. We need a plan of action. We need to structure our workouts. How you do this is up to you. Back in the day when I first started, I used to write down all my workouts on my phone. Had my notes up, just typed in the session I would do on that day. Again, the goal is obviously to try and better your performance each week. By writing down your workouts, one, you're creating discipline, and also you have a form of control. You can track and progress how you're doing. You wanna be progressively overloading. By doing this, you're ensuring you are going to get stronger and you're gonna improve your calisthenics. An example of progressively overloading is, let's say your first week of calisthenics, you can only do 10 push-ups. Well, set yourself a goal. Next week, you're gonna to aim to do 12 push-ups in a row. By making those small micro goals, you're actually seeing results, seeing progress, and you won't be disheartened when you're like, oh, why can't I do all these crazy movements yet? It is also a game of patience. This does take time, guys. I've been training now for eight years, and I'm still not at a crazy advanced level. I can do a lot of things, but again, it does take time, guys. Be patient, keep at it, and you will see the results. We're getting close. Tip number four. Nutrition is key, guys. It totally depends on your goal. A lot of you may be at different physique stages. Some of you may be skinny fat. Others may be just a bit more fat, so they have carrying a lot of excess body fat. Others are very, very skinny, and they just don't have a lot of muscle on. So it's totally dependent on you what your nutrition is. Generally speaking though, if we're talking about calisthenics, just mastering those cool moves like the levers, planches, etc., we wanna have a lean physique. We wanna carry as little body fat as possible. Remember guys, the lighter you are the calisthenics, the easier these body movements become. On the other hand, if you're someone that also wants to build a physique with calisthenics, you're relatively skinny, you wanna build muscle, then your nutrition may look more calorie dense. You have to intake a lot more calories because you wanna gain size. You wanna build muscle and gain size. So again, it depends on your goal, how your nutrition is gonna be set up like. Last final tip guys, now I know you guys all wanna learn those crazy skills. Remember, drill those basics, and again, with structure, we can learn them. But, and I must repeat, but only practice one or two skills maximum at a time. If you try and learn everything all at once, you're just gonna go nowhere. You need to pick one or two skills to practice at to really master them and then move on to the next ones. I've made a calisthenic skills, guys, really, literally from beginner to advanced level. Check that video out, pick one or two beginner exercises from those lists, the skills list, and then master them. Once you master them, move on to the next set of skills. This is valuable, guys, because you won't be wasting your time drilling crazy hard skills which you don't have the strength for just yet in this moment in time. An example of a beginner skill that's very easy to learn are frog stand, L sits, headstands. If you can master those basics first, it's gonna give you a sense of accomplishment. You're gonna actually feel good that you can master these movements, these easier movements, and then, when you get more stronger guys, we can then take on those levers and planches. Now I could go into so much detail into this, but I won't, I just leave you in the description below with a few videos I've made in the past, my full day of eating videos, for those of you who wanna get into a cut, who want to lean out, to get really ripped, shredded, lose that body fat. I've also made meal plans for people who wanna bulk up and add size, so again, I'll leave all of that in the description below. You guys have an abundance of information to take a look at. I've made so many videos on this channel. Make use of all of them. Tip number five, <sighs> patience. I get so many questions, like so many questions of people saying, oh, how long will it take me to master this school? Oh, how long will it take me to look like this? Guys, I don't know the answer. I don't know. There's too many factors that determine that. The main thing you need to have is patience. This is a game of patience. Calisthenics is very humbling. Rather than worrying how long everything will take, 
Just enjoy the process. Enjoy your training. Appreciate that you're learning a new skill and you're actually progressing with your training. By doing this, you won't rush things and risk the chance of any injuries. You also won't beat yourself up if you can't achieve a certain skill within a certain time. So please guys, have patience. Enjoy the process and trust in it. You have so much time to work out in your life. The goal for me is longevity. I wanna be able to do planche when I'm 70 years old. I wanna be pain-free when I'm way older. That is the ultimate goal, guys. So please, be humble, be patient, and enjoy the journey. Woo, that's a lot of tips, guys. But now, I hope you have a better understanding on how to start off your calisthenics journey. Comment below on your thoughts in this video and let me know what your five tips are also for anyone else out there who wants to start their calisthenics journey too. As always, it's been a pleasure. It's been your boy Tyo from at Abnormal underscore Beings and I'll catch you guys next week with another video. It's been your boy Tyo and I'm out. Peace.